McFarlane rearranged a few plastic molecules and gave us a new figure. Here's your look at the McFarlane Toys DC Multiverse Crisis on Infinite Earths Firestorm. Ronnie Raymond and Professor Martin Stain are two very different personalities. One is the epitome of youthful exuberance, the other is a rational thought personified. But when merged into a single entity, these opposites complement each other's strengths as Firestorm, the nuclear man. Firestorm is a living nuclear reaction and one of the mightiest heroes in the world. I guess you could say, when it comes to Ronnie Raymond and Professor Martin Stain, opposites do attract. Unfortunately, this would have been in time that I brought my tape measure in and showed you guys exactly how tall Firestorm stands. That would have been the case if it wasn't for the case that my tape measure exploded on me in my last review. Literally, I was extending out the tape measure, and it just exploded without, obviously, that little sound. So I'm going to have to try to track down a second tape measure. In the meantime, though, what I will do is at least bring in another figure so you can at least get a gauge of how much taller Firestorm stands than regular DC Multiverse figures. Case in point, to the left, there's Batman Nightfall Batman. To the right, here's the Flash that came included with the Red Death version of the figure. And also, just as well, you want to see what he looks like with a bigger and bulkier figure. If I get him to stand, here's what Firestorm as well looks like with the DC Rebirth Superman. Mm -hmm. Come to think of it, maybe if I gave Firestorm some of my garbage, he could make me a new tape measure. Okay, maybe that's not going to happen. What will happen, though, is we're going to have a look at the accessories that come included with the figure. First, Firestorm comes included with a podium standee that has the DC logo printed here on the front. He also does have, of course, a card that sits inside the podium. We're just going to put that to the side. This podium, by the way, is the exact same as all the ones we've gotten in the past. The card, of course, that sits inside of that is the McFarlane Collector's Edition version of Firestorm. I'm actually glad that they decided to go with the direction of this one, giving a more classic look to Firestorm than what we actually get here on the image on the front of the card. I don't recommend recognize this version of Firestorm at all. I more recognize this one. Actually, Firestorm was one of the first, if not the first, uh, superpowers figures that I had as a kid. So I have sort of a soft spot for this design of the character. Flip around, though, to the back. His real name is both Ronnie Raymond and Martin Steen, because, of course, the two collaborate, literally, and they become one being. Of course, there's a read-up. You can read and pause. Well, first pause, then read for yourself. Happens to be the same thing I read at the beginning of this review. Off to the side, though, you may not have seen it. I'm just going to slide the card back into the standee here. Off to the side, there is also, of course, just a regular card, just a regular cardboard, just a regular standee. This is the same display stand as we've gotten with all the cases before with DC Multiverse figures. Although when it comes to be using the McFarlane Collector's Edition figures, you can see that they go all out when it comes to printing on the DC logo. Normally, it would just be in a very, almost hard to see it at the times, the black DC logo. This time around, it's in a very pretty looking silver move those off to the side. And then the figure comes in clue with all these really cool looking hands. Uh, normally I would have said I would have loved if they could have given him some effect pieces, like those little circular rings with little orbs all around it. That usually seems to be the thing that you would go along with, say, a Firestorm figure. But at least they did give him some rather interesting hands instead. First, the figure comes in clue with closed fists. I mean, those are the fists that he has right now in his forearms. Not the most exciting things to look at, I know. Then the figure also comes in clue with these sort of flat hands. I guess if you wanted to have the character flying, for example, you probably could just then pop out the hands that he has right now and swap them out with these. Not the most interesting of hands. What is a little more interesting, though, is the figure comes in clue with a pointing hand, and he also comes in clue with a dynamic hand. And either, again, one of these. Just to show you, just pop the hands off from the forearms, just in case you thought it was making, making lies not lying around on this channel here. Uh, popping, of course, the hands. You want to make sure I've got them on the right way there. Thumbsies go in. Yeah, again, you can give them a pointing hand. And you can also give them a dynamic hand. Don't worry, though. The hands are going to get a lot more interesting than this. The hands, once in pegged in place, again, you got yourself more of a dynamic hand. But then he has all these really interesting fiery effect hands. The first one, actually, that came included inside the packaging with him default was this hand right here. It still has that mustard, mustard yellow molded plastic, but then on the top you can see they've added this really interesting translucent orange plastic. It's not translucent to the point where I can really run my finger behind it. My guess is they probably molded the entire thing, as you can see on the inside, in all the orange, and then they just painted the palm to match sort of the color of the actual plastic. It's pretty close. I mean, this one's a little bit darker in coloring than what just the defaulted mustard colored plastic would be, but it's pretty close. So he has this hand. And then he also has a hand that throws fireballs. 
literally his fingers are turning into fire. But well, you can kind of see there's the little fingers still indicated in the inside. But this one's neat because it's throwing out fires. And then the figure also comes included with these hands. Now this actually looks like he's punching through flames. Once again, still relying on the translucency of the orange plastic. Once again, though, painting the mustard yellow fingers on the front of it. And, and again, any of these hands can just be popped out. We've already done this already, but just to show you guys a tutorial of it again. Pop those out. Let's grab... Do we want to grab this hand? Let's grab this hand. I don't know if I'm going to keep this for the remainder of this review, but again, like if you want to have them throwing the fireballs. And then on the other hand, literally, we can plug the other one then in place. So again, like you get a couple of different effects. Sure, yes, it would have been nice if they could have given like a little orb effect, but still the fact that they actually gave him little flaming hands, really nice touch on McFarlane's part. And again, he also has these ones also as well. Moving everything, though, out of the way and getting a closer look at Firestorm. Again, I th the thing I really like about this and the thing that I wouldn't have liked if they had actually made the figure based on the card is the fact he has more classic roots to him. The design of this character looks very much like Challenge of the Super Friends. No, it wasn't Challenge of the F Super Friends. Galactic Guardians, Superpowers, Galactic Guardians. I'm trying to think of the cartoon, but there obviously was a, a connected to that Kenner line of Superpowers figures. And so happened to be that's, that Firestorm was the first figure I had in my collection before, of course, getting those weirder figures like Red Tornado, Martian Manhunter. I had one other figure as well. Like I had really all the kind of the B and C list characters. Not that I necessarily would have considered Firestorm to be an A or C list character. He's always A list when it comes to me. The head sculpt is really nicely done here. Of course, you got the open cowl piece with a very visible face. I think that the attention to detail and how clean the paint's been applied to the face is really well done, even to the point where they've outlined the areas around his eyes. There doesn't seem to be, from what I can see at least, any paint problems. I mean, when you get close quarters like this, any one of these things could be problematic, especially painting areas around the eyes. But yeah, I think they've done a really nice job here in Firestorm. Like the name would state, though, he does have a Firestorm coming out the top of his head. And again, that's been using a translucent plastic. I don't know, though, it would involve me, yeah, if I look on the inside, though, so they would have used the same coloring of plastic for all this across, and then they probably would have attached the flame piece on top of his head, like just adhered it in place, because I was kind of wondering how they would have done this. I don't think they would have gone the, the full while of actually painting the entire thing, getting like a translucent orange plastic, going in there, painting the finer features in the flesh tone, and of course the cowl piece, it probably would have just been easier for them just to attach the flame piece on top of the head. I don't see a seam line necessarily where I would imagine one one is attached to the other. A nice job though. And then of course the rest of the figure's body, he has the more traditional colors. They're not quite red. It's kind of like a cherry taffy. Have you ever had yourself like cherry candies? They don't tend to be really a dark red. In fact, usually they're kind of like a more of an orange or red. And that looks very much, or like a, a fruit punch, a fruit punch kind of looks like this as well, like a Hawaiian punch. I haven't had a Hawaiian punch in like forever. The color is also, of course, on this guy, he has the mustard yellow there for the front of his shirt or front of his top. And it matches pretty close that he actually has that also in his gloves. Yellows are sometimes a hard thing to kind of match in colors. Like his boots, for example, are pretty close in the colors that he has for it, for this section. And again, they're pretty close to the colors that he has also for his gloves. Spin the figure around to the back. Like again, all the striping is really nicely done except for two little areas here. It's clean on the front and I don't really notice any paint problems whatsoever. The little smaller orbs in red are all again nicely painted. The orb on the underside, of course, that has the strap across the front, nicely painted too. Except unfortunately right here, I got to smudge this section here and I got to smudge right over here as well. There are a few little areas, by the way, everything has to come together that the lines don't quite connect on the sides of his body. I don't know you can, you know, you can see it there on the other side. I mean, it's not a very seamless continued strand of, of white. So there's a few little areas where I kind of notice like this sticks up just a little bit. I don't think it's going to start to peel, but it definitely does seem like it was attached over top of the plastic. So you just want to be careful that, that this doesn't, and you can kind of see already, it's just flaking just a little bit right there by my thumbnail. And of course, the rest of the colorings are, again, quite, pretty quick, quite consistent when it comes to the rest of the figure. He's very, again, nicely colored. Again, for few little pro paint problems, but those are problems I can easily overlook. Now, for the figure's articulation, Firestorm's head is going to be, once again, on a bald joint. There's nothing, nothing at all that's really getting in the way of preventing this guy from rotating his head all the way around. His head can look up that high, so well, that's that's fairly high. I mean, he probably could have gone a little bit further, but if you so, for example, wanted to get him on a flight stand, I might just end up doing that. Uh, you could do it to a point where it would look like he would be naturally flying and at least being able to see exactly what's in front of him. The figure head does also rock back and forth as well. The upper torso, by the way, does rotate all the way around. It's on a ball joint. It goes up and down, and it also rocks back and forth as well. 
Further down from that, the figure also does have an abdomen uh, torso. So he has an abdomen bulge, or I should say, at the bottom, just behind the belt. And that also rotates quite freely around. Now, the shoulders do rotate, even though he does have these shoulder pads that stick out the sides. Still easily, he can rotate his arms all the way around. The figure does have swivels in his biceps, double hinges in his elbows. Mine, unfortunately, though, I noticed on this elbow is a little bit looser. It isn't as loose on this side, but it is a lot looser on this side. Not to the point where it feels floppy, but getting out of the packaging, I'm a little bit bummed that it's so loose. I mean, for what little time I've actually had this out of the packaging, it shouldn't be lo as loose as it is already. Of course, the legs do split out. This is softer plastic, once again, that they've used for the lower trunks. Legs go forward only by that far. They also go back as well. And of course, because they're using softer plastic here for the lower trunks, bringing the legs forward the way that we are right now does result in sort of stretching this. And every once in a while, I find myself kind of flattening these down as best as I can get them. Figure has a slight swivel at the top of the thigh. Double hinge, yes, on the knee. No articulation on the boot, which was surprising. I actually thought that this would be something that would swivel on its own. But the figure at least does have an ankle pivot up and down this way. A ankle rocker this way. And the figure, of course, as always, does come into clue with toe articulation as well. What would have made this figure better? Yells somebody at the back of the crowd. Thank you, sir, for bringing that to my attention. I don't think there's really much I would have done differently to the figure. Maybe cleaned up some of the paint. Like, for example, like I've got a couple of smudges on the back, but like displaying them from the front, which is usually the way I'm sure most people are going to be displaying their figures. I, I don't really notice a lot of paint problems at all. White on top of yellow, red on top of white can all be problemed areas when it comes to paint. And yet the figure is pretty clean. And nice effects, of course, they include these additional hands that the figure has as well. Uh, could have loved to have had maybe some additional little orb effects that could have wrapped around his hand. But I kind of also really kind of think about the older figures too, like the old days of DC, DC Classics figures from like Mattel. Those figures back in the day, I still have my Firestorm. Oh, I wonder where he went. But I think from what I remember, he also had little orbs as well that you could attach onto the hands. Maybe a little outdated by that mindset. I do actually like the flame effects that they gave for the hands. There's a couple of different options available if you want to display the figure with that. And short of maybe not having a flight stand, which is something I can easily just grab myself. An overall nice figure from the folks over at McFarland Toys. I know. I know. Firestorm doesn't technically come in clue with a flight stand, and yet I couldn't resist here for final looks not to have the figure in flight, so I just happened to use and borrow a flight stand that we actually got, of all things, from Black Manta. The figure does look quite good, actually, in a flight stance like this. Uh, he is, of course, hurling fireballs with one hand, and his other hand is on fire. Uh, we'll have the figure displayed, I think, on the shelf like you're seeing right now, and as usually the case when it comes to these upgraded figures of the, Mar the McFarlane Collector's Edition line, I will be displaying the figures also with a podium card standee. I like the standee myself. I know some people kind of think it's just a waste of plastic. I mean, obviously, if preferred the choice, I would have honestly just gone with a flight stand and not used the podium stand and just saved the plastic that way. But yeah, it does kind of give him a little more polished look. Speaking of polished look, I really am impressed again, the paint that they applied to this figure. It isn't the cleanest, certainly when it comes to the seamless lines on the, on the sides of the figure's torso, you can very obviously see how two parts to a front and back torso didn't quite meet in the middle, but the rest of the figure does look quite good. And I do like the way that he's actually got a more classic design. Whether though he will look like the characters that's featured on the front of the card, even if he is, I probably won't end up picking up that more modernized version of Firestorm. I prefer the classics myself. What do you guys think of the figure? Let me know down below in the comment section. Have you had the chance to get the Marvel's, the McFarlane, I keep calling it Marvel's, Mar McFarlane Collector's Edition. This was, again, Crisis on Infinite Earths, Firestorm. Uh, let me know down below in the comment section, yeah, if you've had the chance to pick up this figure. I did ultimately order this one online. I couldn't have found this guy at all, even if I wanted to in local comic book stores. But I did order this guy online and very, very happy to finally have him in my collection. If you guys enjoyed this video, want to hit with a like. If you guys are loving the content you guys are seeing and you would like to stick around for more, we are, by the way, going to be looking at some more DC multiverse reviews, courtesy of the folks over at McFarlane Toys. So if that's the kind of thing you like to come back to this channel for, I'd like to think you're coming back to the channel for other things, but if primarily that's the main reasoning you're coming back to this channel, then please do come back because we're, of course, going to be looking at a lot more stuff. As always, guys, thanks for watching. See you guys next time.